Hello, I'm Nana Last, and I'm telling you today about my Architecture 5500 course, Architecture and Representation. This is a history theory seminar that is open to undergraduates, graduates, and PhD students. The seminar will examine architecture's relations to representation, mostly focusing on the 20th and 21st centuries. The course itself is divided into three parts, modernism, postmodernism, and the digital era. The course will begin by examining relations between how we draw and what we design, how new methods and tools of representation have impacted architectural design and practices, and it will also look at how different modes of architectural representation construct meaning and relate to broader social, cultural, and epistemological ideas. So the first section of the course is modernism, and we will begin with questions about the relations well, here you see the three parts. We will begin with questions about the relations between vision, observation, and visual technologies. And to discuss that, we will talk about the problem of the observer. We see here an image from Jonathan Crary's book, which we will read a couple of chapters from, and his discussion really of the camera obscura and its subject, as well as the idea of visionary abstraction. The course will continue by moving on to the discussion of representation and order. Um, we will begin by reading Foucault's essay on the painting Las Meninas from the start of his book, The Order of Things. And what's interesting about this is that the essay was the center of a renewed discussion in the 1970s and 80s, not just about, paint, about painting or about this painting, but really on the topic of representation and how it relates to space more broadly and how our bodies are ordered in space and questions of authority. We will continue by discussing um, a, a main concept of architecture and representation where they coming, come together and that is the idea of perspective. We will begin by looking at a very um, late 19th, early 20th century understanding of this through the work of Erwin Panofsky and his discussion of perspective as symbolic form that really aligns with art historical thinking. We will then see how this discussion of perspective as symbolic form develops in a very different way in the work of Nelson Goodman in the 1970s. We will then move on to the second part of the course. The second part of the course is postmodernism, which will take up again with the idea of perspective now being rethought. And we will begin by looking at the later 20th century discussions of perspective in relation to drawing and theory with a focus on different forms of perspective and other types of projective drawing. So first we will look at Damisch's The Origins of Perspective that re-examined Brunelleschi's famous 15th century experiments. And he describes really how they duly created both linear perspective and the Western subject at the same time. We will then continue on with other forms and discussions of other types of projection. Um, we'll see here an image that, that's important to Alan Weiss's discussion of 17th century French formal gardens as this anamorphic projection. And we will continue with Robin Evans' discussion of composition and projection. We will then switch our discussion to other types of relationships between postmodernism and spatiality by looking at Frederick Jameson's postmodernism and the cultural logic of late capitalism, and really his discussion that makes architecture central to our understanding of postmodernism with its creation of what he calls spatial equivalence in the world system. We'll then continue to look um, in the 70s and 60s, 70s, and really 80s through a range of practices that make how they represent what they're talking about central to what they do and develop both new forms of representation and, and raise representation to a very um, extreme level in its focus. So we get quite, we get practices such as super studio and archigram. And later on, we will get people who very much use the idea of construction and issues that come out of representation with practices like Diller and Scafidio with the blur building. We will additionally look at a set of practices that use this act of construction and drawing in different ways and really raise questions of how do we read these drawings? What is that about? How do we understand what we see? Um, for example, we have work of Peter Eisenman, but we also have um, work of practices like 
Daniel Liebskin that really challenge any idea of how we discuss these. Following this, we have some diagrams from, we have this work on diagramming. We will look at the work in there of um, the special issue of any by Deleuze and Guattari and Quinter and Greglin and others. And we will continue on to the digital era, um, which both considers um, the digital turn in architecture that we get with Mario Carpo, as well as other terms that begin to get discussed at that point in very many different ways of, of nonlinear architecture, the fold topological architecture. And we'll move on to computer and computational with driven design and um, topics such as autopoiesis and the creation of second order systems that um, again will borrow from the social sciences. At the end, we will close the semester by looking at um, ideas on representation that emerge out of big data. And, by, and we will do this by looking at Orit Halpern's book, Beautiful Data, a, his, a History of Vision and Reason Since 1945.